Wow. It's not every day you can say that you're in the car with George Let's Michael. Let's go outside <laughs> in the darkness. <laughs> we're outside birdies and we're not getting fish and chips. That's just mad. Now, tell me a wee bit about you because, you know, George Where Michael's do we start? No, no longer. Where do we start? See. 1991. Well, 1989, I left school and I became a labourer for a local builder. Right, okay. And I was quite happy in that little world, mixing cement and, you know, all that sort of labour inside of things. And then as we, as we sort of got more and more work, we ended up contracting all around the country and I ended up on building sites, big building sites with lots of blokes that used to go out drinking every night. And if you stayed in the B&B, &B, you was a wuss. So everybody had to go out. And karaoke came out. Good old, karaoke good old karaoke comes out. And um, if you got up and sang back in the, in the 90, 1991, you got a free pint. Right, and okay. And at that time with the boys, that's all you wanted to do okay. was to, uh, yes. you know, have a few beers. And have then, a few beers. So that was basically the start of it, was me singing on a few karaoke machines. And I wasn't singing George Michael at the time, which is the funny thing. I'm not joking, I was wanting to be Marty Pello. I love wet, <laughs> I love wet, wet, wet. And, um, you can, I can see that, actually. I can see a wee bit yeah, of Marty there I, as I well. I loved Marty, especially, you know, all that early stuff, Angel Eyes, Sweet Little Mystery and all that. And I, can I you just, do it? My love is taking a tumble, mm, but I'm still standing. It's too Georgie now, though, yeah. isn't it? It's like <laughs> Marty wanted to be George, isn't it? No. So, um, so I, yeah, I was doing... I wanted to be Marty Pello, you know, because he did that Beatles one, didn't he? What would you do... In that one. Yes. And um, the guy actually said to me, mate, he said, I actually think you can sing, and I think you sound a bit like George Michael, because he was at number one at the time with Elton, doing yes, Don't Let yes, The Sun. Yes. He said, I'll tell you what we'll do next week. We'll try Don't, don't Let The Sun. I said, if it gets me another pint, I don't mind. Put yes. me on all night. That's how I was, you know. So uh, it, it was this karaoke guy's idea that I sang George Michael and then I did the song and then the week after we did another one like, let's do Faith. That's a great... I've got that one on the machine because at the time there was only a little limited amount of songs. Yes. You know, they weren't like the catalogues they have now. And uh, so I just started just doing this for fun in, in the in the karaoke's and he made a tape of me. I took it home and I gave it to my partner and she said, I thought you were staying in when you went away, we were saving up for our mortgage deposit. And I said, well, I've been lying to you. I've been out partying every night. <laughs> and, oh, um, telling little fibs. But I just said, I explained to her that you couldn't stay in. You, you weren't allowed to. Yes. And uh, so behind my back, then I gave her this tape of me singing. M my mum and my partner sent this tape off to Stars in Their Eyes. Can you remember Stars oh, in Their Eyes? Oh, God, Stars Tonight, in Their Eyes. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be. And it was, yeah, it was that. So the tape went in without me knowing. Yes. And then I got a call from Granada TV saying, we've got a tape of you singing as George Michael. would really be interested in an audition. And I went, no thanks. Boom, put the phone down. Right. And uh, they, um, they contacted me back in and said, no, we get this all the time. This is a genuine... You know, we've got your tape, we are Granada TV, here's our number, call us back if you like. We want an audition from you if you can, if you're interested, we'd love to see you in Birmingham. So I said, OK. So I did ring them back after a good chat with my mum, and my mum's Irish, and she says, oh, rubbish, just go on with you, and just, yeah. just give, it, give it a go, you know. That's how she thinks she tries to talk like that. And, um, yeah, so I just did it, and I, and I went to the audition, and to cut a long story short... I got to the, the on the show, which was an amazing achievement, considering I'd just done about, you know, a few karaoke's, went on the show, and I did Faith on the show in, uh, with the leather jacket and all that, and it was 94 when it was aired, and I got to the final, and guess who beat me in the final? I beat you. I feel it in my fingers. <laughs> I feel it in my toes. Yeah. Oh, no. Marty Pello, good old John Finch, good lad. <laughs> Yeah, imagine that. Is that is weird. That was weird, that... I know, because w when we was in the final <laughs> together in the hotel, because we would be singing up late at night, I was as much of a Marty Pello fan as he was. So it was like, George Michael really wanted to be Marty Pello. Anyway, oh, uh, so that was, the, that was the situation. Anyway, so I left there, got went back to the building sites for about six weeks, and at that time the, the mobile phones came out, the Nokias, and they was like that big with an aerial that you pulled out. And I had, the, I had the mobile on my belt and I was still trying to work doing the labouring because I'd just got a mortgage. I did get the mortgage, by the way. And uh, <laughs> the phone was just going all the time from TV, the Granada saying, look, we've got an agent that wants you to open a supermarket. You know, we've got somebody that wants you to sing in a nightclub. And all these little bits, of, little bits of offers came in. Nothing major, no, no, no big breaks. 
but it was it was quite an interesting time because I'd never been in 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 that position, and it was it was nice to be in that limelight for that short period of time. You know, it was in the Sun newspaper or yes. you know whichever one it was in at the time. So it was good, and I got I got quite I like that. I thought oh, that was nice, but I went back to work. The phone started ringing more and more. I decided to have a go at doing the live circuit. Yes, and then um, twenty five years later on, um, here I am in Edinburgh. After that. But there's been loads more to right. tell you. What I want to ask Go is, on. the real George Michael, yes. did he ever see you? Yes. Yes, he did. What did he see and where um, was that? I was in the... Well, sort of, I got on the road doing all the gigs and I did a George Michael set and then I did a, a short uh, nightclub appearance thing that we I used to do called Wham Bam and I had an Andrew Ridgely lookalike. And we was doing a bit of a tour around all the nightclubs back in the 90s and one of our... Um, groups of, of work was this pub chain called i think they were like green king or something like that and they'd bought all these properties that were pubs in in and around london and they did them up and turned them to like rock bars like chicago rock cafes okay. which, which i did that yes. as well anyway i was singing away one night and i looked down and lo and behold me i can see george michael stood right in front of me sort of where that car is with a cap on a bit like what a bit, a bit like how i am to us tonight I'm, I'm covering my bad hairstyle. <laughs> but, um, so there, there he is, and he was actually with Andrew Ridgely and a couple of other guys. Where about was this? This was, in, this was in Harrow in North Harrow. London, and it was called the Cinnibar. If anybody was in the Cinnibar in 1997, September, I can't remember the date, because I remember it so well, and um, he just kind of gave me the thumbs up, and I thought, is that like another lookalike or something? So I went backstage when we finished, and I said to my friend Simon, that was who was with me, I said, I reckon I've just, I'm sure I've just seen George Michael and Andrew originally. He went, don't be ridiculous. Anyway, so I thought no more of it. So all I got was like a thumbs up. As years went by, I still maintained doing the George Michael gig, and I got invita invited to Sony offices to do a promotional thing for Sony for George Michael's yeah. album. And uh, so I went down to, to um, Putney Bridge, where the offices are in London, and I sort of had to go in, sing a few songs, and just look like George Michael. And then I said, "What's this about?" And they said, "Oh, well, we're we're releasing George Michael's album 25 Live um, in November." Of this is they, ah, we're, yeah, we've jumped uh -huh, into 2006 yes. now. Sorry, I've gone right on. No, no. So we've moved into 2006, and. Um, they said that George is on tour in, in Europe. We really want to get this album to number one, obviously because of all of our history, but this, George still had one more, I think, album to let them sell. So they wanted to make it number one. There was loads of other really big acts releasing on the same day, Jamiroquai, Sugar Babes, loads of Westlife. It was just like loads of mm -hmm. brilliant acts, but they really wanted George to be at number one. So they said, what we want you to do is pretend to be him. So you're gonna you're gonna have his car, you're gonna have security, we're gonna get out at various destinations where people will be thinking that George Michael's turning up to sign CDs. And I went, You're joking, aren't you? And they said, No, this is that's exactly what we want you to do. You can sing along if you want, sing a couple of songs if you want. I'm like, this is just bizarre. So anyway, I was on holiday in the Grand Canaria and they rang me and said, We need you tomorrow. And I oh, went, no. Oh, I'm on holiday, mate, sorry, I can't do it. <gasps> They said, no, we really do need you tomorrow. We'll fly you and your family back <laughs> to England and then we'll send you back again. And I went, well, I'm not sure my, you know, my partner's going to be, be like this because we don't get many holidays. Anyway, so we had a discussion. He says, oh, you better go and do it. And anyway, I went to do this promotional thing for George. Um, I got, it went ever so well. I sold 100,000 copies by midday. I think it was uh, Monday the 16th of November. Yeah, these dates sort of remember. And then um, and on the back And people knew it was the, you? That... No, people actually thought it was him. This was really, really bizarre. I mean, I'm, and I'm not sure because everyone, because I had people with me with ear, you know, it was uh -huh. proper like, it was like a movie. So they still so think they, to this day. Well, yeah, there's they probably believe. people with a CD at home with my signature on it that it says George Michael. On it. So why didn't? The, where was the real George at he this was point? In, he was in. I think he was either in Germany or Austria, one of those sort of places on tour with his, you know. With his um, with his band. So you were the, it was the 25. George Michael. So I pretended to be George Michael in order to sell his album for him, which was really odd. And I tell people that, and they go, "What? George Michael doesn't need a lookalike." Sony are you? gonna like go. Yeah. This guy's talking rubbish, but yeah, they're not. No, they're, no, I'm not. I'm not. It's dead true, honestly. So anyway, the back of that, I ended up getting um, you know, a nice picture from George signed saying thank you, Robert. You know, it was an amazing day. Got a nice letter from him, and I went backstage to meet everybody backstage including George and the band and everybody so I'm stood there talking to Andy Stevens who is his manager 
and I'm not in my George Michael mode because I didn't want to turn up to yes. Wembley Stadium looking like George Michael. So I'm just in like my civvies. I've had a shave and I'm totally not looking. I'm looking more like Marty Pello on a good day, by the way, then. <laughs> Still going back to Marty. Anyway, uh, I said to his manager, you know what, I'd really like George to see me all, all done up yeah. and, and doing my thing. And he said, we've seen you. He's seen you loads of times. <laughs> and I said, don't be ridiculous. He said, no, honestly. He said, the first time was in, like, Harrow or something in, in, in the 90s. He said, he's been to loads of your gigs. And I went, you are having a laugh. So the story came back to me. I actually did see him in, in, that, in that venue in North London. And, and Andy Stevens, his manager, said they were on their way back from a meeting um, with Sony to do with the album cover of... A, there was a Wham! album in the 90s called If You Were There. It was like a re-look. I think ABBA did it first with ABBA Gold, and then Wham! did it, and they was planning the, the front cover on the way back from the meeting, and it said at the side of the road, Wham! tribute tonight, and they literally pulled in, and that's how he ended up first ever seeing me. And then, what a story from the man himself! Yeah, I know. <laughs> From the man himself. Yeah. That, that's weird though, isn't it? That yeah. Sony paid you to be George Michael. It's ever so well. weird, but it's really nice that, that this guy that was such a, a hero, I mean, he's a massive hero of mine anyway. I mean, lots of the 80s people were, but George Michael in particular. I was never a Wham fan, um, so I had to learn all them songs, but the Faith era for me was just like the most amazing time. I thought he was, he was just a genius. You know, Obviously that now that he's passed away, yeah. I, I take it demand for you has just soared. Yeah, it's, it's, it, the last two, two years, yeah, last two years has been real, a real eye opener. Um, there's just, to me, there's just been too much greed, I think. People have just gone mad for it, and I'm not like that. I'm not interested in it. So I've kind of stepped back in, if I, as much as I could. I've kept all my regular venues that I've always done, but then all the others that have came on board, I've kind of had to say no to because I didn't want to overdo it and overkill it, which I could have done. I could have done all these theatre tours that are doing the rounds at the minute, Fast Love and Faith and all that. They did ask me to do it, and at the time, I said, look, the guy's just died. You know, this is like a week after he died, and I'm getting calls to do theatre shows. Mm. And I said, no, I'm sorry, I just can't do it. I can't, I'm just, it was like, like I said to other people, it was like living with a family bereavement because I've sank myself into this character for 20 odd years, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's almost like you're living and breathing. Uh, you know, you're not, I'm not only just doing the songs, you're doing the actions, the movements, you, you're looking out for any bit of, you know, thing that's happening in his life, which, which was, you know, pretty bad towards the end. I think he decided to give up, you know. Um, do, you, I, do you own anything of his? Um, I'm not sure whether I think I've got, I've got a book signed and I've got the picture. I never really, I could have had a jacket. Somebody was selling a, a BSA jacket years ago um, from the Faith Tour and I could have bought it pretty cheap. It was actually up in Scotland as well and I, and I didn't buy it. And, and I, cause, only because it was just slightly too small for me. So I'm, yeah. I'm a bit of a beefy. And have you got any other Scottish links other than being here today at Bertie's? Yeah, I, well, I've been, I've been coming up to Scotland for years doing gigs, doing gigs in Falkirk, Larbor. Um, Grangemouth at the uh, the hotel there. Can't remember what it's called now. It might have be called the Grangemouth. Oh. Falkirk, um, Edinburgh. I've been to Edinburgh a few times. Um, I've got no family up here. Like my mum's Irish, my dad's Italian, so it's a bit weird. Born in Scunthorpe. No Greek. <laughs> no Greek. No. But funnily enough, George Michael's dad's Greek, and his mum's like English Irish. I've been told. It's yes. like there's a mixture. So my mum's in, my mum's Irish and my dad's Italian. So it's a fairly similar mix up there. That's we were amazing. both born in, in the UK. But what, what was really nice about him was in 2014, he was doing an interview in a, a magazine called Q. You've probably heard of it, the oh, Q yeah. magazine. And one of the, you know, he had that short hair with that beard, that oh, sort yes, of really uh -huh. sort of yes. night, like real sharp goatee that went yes. like that. Um, I think I was told that the interview was trying to make out that he looked a bit like Ringo Starr at that time. Right, okay. So he was having a bit of a joke saying, oh, does anybody ever accuse you of being anybody else? And George Michael turned around and said, yes, I'm often told I'm Robert Lamberti. He's a George Michael tribute or something like that, lookalike. See, yeah. that's brilliant. Yeah, that's... and so just to receive that as well was just, it that's was almost amazing. like a blessing that, you know, he, he said that. It's such a really nice thing. So he was always aware of what I was doing and YouTube came out and we was what, apparently would watch videos and keep up to date with what I was doing. So that was really nice. That's and I know amazing. a few of his relatives as well. Would you do a movie, I'm wrapping this up in a sec, but would mm. you do um, a movie, like, in, you know, with well, Freddie Mercury enough, obviously has done... That would be an amazing thing to do. I think, you know, even if, it, even if I got to just sing, 
some of the, you know, like there's a guy called Mark Martell who did all the vocals yes, for the, even if I could do some of the singing, I'm, I'd, I'd love to have a go at the acting. Whether I could do it as well as somebody else, I'm not sure. But and have you been approached? I've just been, funny enough, I've been approached this week by um, an American company called um, Reels, and they do a, a program called The Price of Fame, and they do like a little bit of a documentary on on certain pop stars. I think they've done Prince and Bowie and people like that. Shania, they've even done Shania Twain. And they've been in touch, and I've actually done two auditions by just by my phone, doing some acting bits. So I'm waiting to hear from that. So that that might come off. So that might be interesting. That's cool. So, and a film potentially in the future. Oh, a film would just be a, would be a dream, wouldn't it? Amazing. It'd be a dream. You know, that would be that would be the ultimate. I think a film on the on the level of like the Bohemian Rhapsody. That would be amazing. Yeah. What would you call it? Freedom. I like think so, documentary. probably, Freedom, yeah. something like that. Now, we've had a brilliant interview, Thank and I know you. you've been singing all night. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can do a cappella for me in the car that I can see? I'm here. I'd say love was a magical thing I'd say love would keep us from pain Had I been there, had I been there I would promise you all of my life But to lose, you would cut like a knife I've just realised we've got somebody in the back here <laughs> Let's go outside Yeah, Let's go so yeah outside. Absolutely brilliant Thank you Thank so, you much. so um, much If what anybody's I... out there, come along to the Edinburgh gig with my band I'm doing a gig in Edinburgh in April, uh, in April on May, can't remember the date now I'll find it out, I'll put it on the bottom yes, of it's this at the, Is it the Festival Hall? Oh yeah, yeah probably, yeah, yeah, yeah Is it the Festival Hall? We'll f I'll find out all the details for you I should know all this, I should know That's it That's alright, listen, you're in your car, please drive safely Thank you, bye <laughs> Bye, bye. <laughs>